Okay, we are going to begin. Let me switch over my screen so you can see my uh, my program now. Okay, awesome. So, hey, thank you once again for joining in on today's episode of Luminar Live. Today I'm going to be talking about selective filter editing inside of Luminar 2018, the brand new version of Luminar that's going to be coming to you very soon. And uh, selective editing is something uh, hugely important in my workflow, and I think this is what really you know, this is like so powerful that uh, what this can do to your photos inside of Luminar. And it gives you control over just about everything in your photo. And, you know, I want to show you exactly what this stuff does. So let's start taking a look at this photo here. Now we are looking at a, uh, oh, and in the meantime, I just, I do want to mention that um, this is beta software that I'm using. So this is an early release. So uh, might have a glitch or two here. Uh, so don't worry about that. And uh, also, if you have any questions, be sure to fill them out in the comment section. I'll answer those live. And if I don't get a chance to answer them live, I'll answer them in the future when I uh, log back into Facebook. Okay, so I have this raw file up from my Sony a7R camera. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start off with a preset. And I know that uh, a lot of people will start off with presets. And let's go ahead and I'm going to just take a look at this enhanced reality. Now, um, actually, what I want to do is, let me backtrack one second here. I'm going to click on that undo. I want to point out something here, and I'm going to have to move my screen so you guys can see this because I think my video is blocking. There's this uh, overlay preset button down over here. And what this does is when you click on that, it's going to add a new layer for you automatically where you can then start adding additional presets to it. I find that I usually end up doing that uh, you know, and I work in a layer workflow, and I'm gonna explain about layers and how that is beneficial to you. But uh, so right now, uh, I have this on a new layer, and this is the enhanced reality. And I can go in here, and let's see here, I can double click on that, and uh, I'll rename that uh, layer so that I know that that's the enhanced reality preset that I'm using. Now, down over here, you'll notice on that preset that it has a slider amount. And let me drag this over here. So it has a slider amount. Sometimes these presets are going to be a little bit too strong for you to start with. So by dragging down on this amount, it's going to lower the intensity. And if you go all the way to zero, you know, of course, you're not going to have any of that preset going on. If you increase that all the way up to 100, you're ha you have the full preset effect there. Same thing is in the layers in the upper right hand corner. If I click and drag on the opacity, it's doing basically the same thing. It's lowering the intensity of actually that whole layer there. And uh, back at 100, you have it at full strength. So this is one of the steps that you want to uh, do to start doing some selective uh, filter editing on your photos. Now, of course, this pre uh, preset is a combination of all of these filters over here. And so if I wanted to back off on this, I can just back off. Let's say that filter was just a little too strong. Back off on that just a little bit. Now I'm going to click on that overlay preset button because I'm going to add a whole nother layer. And this time I'm going to pick another filter and let's go, or actually another preset, and let's go with dramatic grungy. Okay, so now what we see here is this is really you know, sort of grunged up my photo. I mean, it does say dramatic grungy and it definitely did the trick. You know, lowering the amount, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna lower the intensity. I kind of like what it's doing somewhat to the car, but I don't like what it's doing around the edges of it. So now we're gonna get into some masking. And this mask brush over here in the right-hand side where the layer is, if I click on that, I have four different options to create a mask. I can do a brush where I paint it in selectively. I can do a radial mask, a gradient mask, or a luminosity mask. Let's take a look at radial mask right now. I'm gonna click on that, and then in the center here, it tells me to click and drag to draw a circle. I'm just gonna click and drag, and let's get a circle kind of like this. And I'll drag this over here into the center, now I can adjust the feathering of it, I can adjust the size and the shape of it as well using these uh, little controls on the edge. Now notice though what happened was that it's uh, doing the preset in the um, around the outer edges. I don't want it on the outer edges, I want it just in the middle. If I go up here into mask, I can click on invert and we'll just wait for that to, uh, to invert here, okay. There we go, so now I have that grunge look just in the center. And let's see here, I'll just increase this just a little bit more so we can get a better view of that. And let me click on done. Now, if I turn this layer off and on, we can see how that effect is just in the center of the of the car, you know, or, or, the, or the photo. So on the car, right where I want to have it. I can go down here and 
increase the brightness a little bit and make some adjustments to that preset. Now another thing is too, I'm also noticing that there's some spill off. So I'm, you know, it's it's affecting the car, but it's also affecting some other areas too. If I click on the brush tool and I can click on this eye icon to the right, I can see where that mask is being applied. So if I take the eraser, I can go ahead and erase that effect and even uh, let's see here, lower my brush size a little bit and come around here so that now it's not going to be affecting the sky or the trees at all or anything like that. It's going to be just affecting the car, which is where I want it to have that happen. Okay, let's take a look at that now. All right, perfect. So here's a little before and after. So this is one type of case where you would use some selective filter adjustments and uh, in this case here using the, uh, using the radial mask. Okay, so let's see, I'm gonna take a look here and see if we had any questions coming in. Doesn't look like any questions right now. So uh, I'm gonna keep on working on this photo, but I'm gonna reset everything here. So uh, let's go to, uh, uh, where am I? Uh, filters, and I'm gonna delete all my filters. And I'm gonna start from scratch. Actually, let's get rid of this layer here too. Get rid of this layer, and there we are. Okay, so now we're starting from scratch again. And what I'm gonna do here is add a couple filters. And let's go ahead and add the, uh, let's see here, let's get the raw develop. Uh, let's grab the saturation and vibrance, uh, adjustable gradient, which is up on top here, and the AI filter, okay. Perfect. So now I'm just going to make a couple quick adjustments to this photo. Uh, let's bring up the shadows and lower the highlights a little bit and maybe give it a little bit of contrast and adjust the temperature ever so slightly. Give it just a little bit of boost in clarity, a little bit of saturation and a little bit of vibrance. Just wanted to get this photo looking a little bit better for us here. Okay, so just with a couple of quick adjustments on there, I actually do want to point out, this is the before and the after. Uh, so you got some really good power in the develop uh, filter inside of Luminar. Okay, now I want to do the adjustable gradient. I want to darken down the top part of the sky because it's still looking a little bit too bright. So if I set my orientation here, I can drag this up a little bit and I do want to make sure that it's getting part of the sky. And let's see here, if I lower my exposure, and I'm going to do this a little bit more than I normally would just for a little bit of dramatic effects. So you can really see what's going on here. Okay, so I've lowered my exposure and let's turn this off and on. Do you notice what's happening here is that I, not only is it darkening the sky and it's darkening it right down to the horizon that I want, but it's also darkening in on the truck. So now I'm going to show you localized adjustments on a per filter level. So if I click on this icon here, I'm going to click on the brush. And what I'm going to do is I have it in the erase mode and I'll just shrink my brush size down a little bit. And then as I paint in here, I'm actually erasing the effect of that graduated filter where it was bleeding into the truck and the trees over here. And maybe lower that brush size down just a little bit more so I can get right up to the top here and get into that tree as well. And then I'll just increase the brush size to make sure I got all this bottom area. And then I'll hit done and let's take a look here now. So we'll turn this off and on. Notice how just the background is getting uh, the, the effect of that filter. Let's go ahead now and let's see here. Uh, let's get, try and get rid of some noise. Now, you know, um, noise happens, uh, especially in this particular photo where, uh, let's see if we can even see any here, um, where I'm really brightening up the shadows, you know, to a, a great extent, you can end up seeing some noise coming inside here, especially in your shadows. So I'm gonna add a filter and let's get the denoise filter. Let's grab that. And this is something brand new inside of Luminar 2018. And I'm gonna adjust the luminosity. Okay, I can see that the noise inside here in my deepest shadows has really been adjusted really well. However, I'm not liking how it's doing everything else here. And I want to apply this just to the shadows. So how can I do that? What I'll do is I will click on the brush icon and I'll click on luminosity. Now this is going to create a luminosity mask. And for those who aren't familiar with luminosity masks, it is making a mask based on all of the tones inside my photo. The color doesn't matter, it's just the tonal range. And when it makes this mask, it's gonna apply the effect, excuse me, it's gonna apply the effect 
to the brightest areas in my photo at the most intense um, strength of the filter and then as my photo gets darker in tonal range that effect is going to apply a lot less. Now notice here what it did was it actually ended up taking the uh, the noise, the denoise is now not working in my shadow area. And let me click on the brush here because I can show you what this luminosity mask looks like here. Now see how we have uh, where it's really deep red? That's where the denoise is really being applied to. And notice how I hardly have any red in my shadows. So the denoise is not being applied there. If I go up to mask, I'll click on invert mask. Now notice how my shadows are deep red and then in my brighter areas, it's, it's not nearly that strength. I'll click on done. And now I have this denoise filter selectively applied to my shadow areas. It's at its strongest in the darkest shadows. And then as my photo gets brighter, the denoise is being applied less and less. So if you want to take care of shadows or noise in your shadows, this is the perfect way to do it. Uh, let me go ahead here and I want to reset this filter for a moment because I know sometimes, sometimes the noise that you're trying to battle is not necessarily in the shadows, but it would be in the sky area. So, Let's see here, I'm actually just going to delete this completely and I'll grab that denoise filter again. Alright, so we got the denoise filter. I'm just going to uh, adjust it. Um, I probably don't have too much noise in here, so you're not going to really see the noise being applied here, but just in terms of the overall technique. So what I'll do is I'll, I apply the denoise, and you want to be zoomed in at 100% when you're doing your noise adjustments. Then after you have that all set, you can zoom back out. Click on your brush tool. And what you can do now is click on paint in. Now, wherever I'm painting in, this is where the noise is going to be applied. So if you have a noisy sky and you don't want to lose any sharpness in anything else in your photo, this is one way to do it. Now I could have used the graduated uh, filter too, or the graduated mask as well, kind of like, it works similar to what I did with the radial mask. Uh, that's just another option for masking for you. Okay, let me hit done, and now I want to talk about um, using layers with this whole thing too, because I use a lot of adjustment layers when I'm working on my photos. And if I click over here and click on add new adjustment layer, I'm going to click on add a new adjustment layer, and let's get some structure and some uh, some detail stuff here. So let me go up to uh, uh, let's see, let's get detail enhancement, let's get microstructure. Where are you? There we are, and let's get the regular structure. Okay, so I did this all on a separate layer, a separate adjustment layer, and I'm going to show you why. I want to add some detail just to the truck area itself. So let me just, I'm just going to go at random here. I'll add some small, medium, and large details. Let's add a little bit of microstructure and a little bit of structure. Now again, my goal isn't to make this look good. I'm just trying to do this for educational purposes here. Now, I already told you that I, you can go in through each one of these. Let's say this effect is maybe, well, I want to have the effect going into the center of the truck. Now, I could go in here and each one of these individual uh, filters and then paint in that effect just into the truck because I don't want to have it on the outside here. But because it's on its own separate layer, I can just click here on the brush and then let's get rid of my mask so we can see where I'm painting in. Then what I'll do is now paint this in right into the area of the truck. Now the benefit of doing it this way is because it's painted in all three of these filters at once. I could have made a mask on this filter and then copied that mask. There are ways here where you can copy masks and paste them into, into each of these filters or even into the layer itself. But a lot of times when I'm working on, uh, on my photos, I'll sort of group the filters together on separate adjustment layers. And in this case, this would be, I would call this like a detail layer. And then I might have another layer that's for color. And then what I can do is do all these adjustments and then I can even use this opacity on this layer to lower the intensity of that effect as well. And I can also certainly go back in here and make any other adjustments to these sliders. So that's another way that I'm using the selective um, adjustments in my photos. And I'll tell you, I mean, some photos I have probably six or seven of these adjustment layers. Uh, some photos I can just get away with one of them. And, uh, you know, it all depends on what I need to do to specific areas of, of my photo. So pay attention to this way of processing your photos. This is hugely powerful and will really be able to uh, help you achieve the look that you want to get in your photo. Okay, I want to take a look and see if we have any questions. Looks like uh, looks like Rich is liking this a lot. Thank you, I appreciate it. 
uh, definitely give this a try. Um, if there's any other questions that appear, I don't see any coming in right now. Um, you know, let me know in the comments and I'll answer them. And uh, thank you once again for tuning in to Luminar Live. And I have one more episode that I'll be doing tomorrow. So I uh, hope I'll see you then tomorrow. All right, take care, everyone. Bye.